Hello, beautiful people. Happy Tuesday. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where in the world you're tuning into and whether you're catching this live or catching this on the replay. Y'all, I am bringing back this special series, the Client Spotlight series, where I'm spotlighting all of our time-rich CEO clients that have gone through the transformation from being um, a solopreneur who's owning a job to now being a CEO who owns and runs a full-time business. And y'all, today I have a very special guest. Mr. Jamal Jones himself, the time rich therapist. Let me go ahead and pass it over to Jamal so he can introduce himself. And let's dive right on in and kick it on off. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Alante, for this opportunity. I am so honored to be here. And I just want to share a little bit about my story. Um, so, for those who don't know, I am a licensed marriage and family therapist based out of Fresno, California. I grew up in the Bay Area and left the Bay Area to, to the San Joaquin Valley to go to college at Fresno State and play football there. And my first uh, career is actually in ministry. I have a background as a pastor. In the 07, 08 economic crisis hit, and it, it, it literally scared me back to graduate school mm. um, because of the fundraising aspect of working for a nonprofit. Um, I just was afraid, could I sustain like being required to fundraise my entire ministry budget and operational expenses, thinking about how can I support a family later? And, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of the background of how I ended up enrolling in graduate school to get my master's in marriage and family therapy. And I always knew that one day I wanted to be in private practice. But at the same time, I did not realize uh, what I was believing for or asking for. It was just a dream of like, get my master's degree, mm -hmm. get 3,000 hours, uh, pass the clinical exam, the, license, the law ethic exam, and one day I'll be in private practice. And I didn't know how to actually get there either. And so once I got licensed in 2017, mm -hmm. I stayed on the W-2 track, Alante. Mm. And the healthcare industry, it is not for the faint of heart. Um, speaking for myself as a mental health care provider in the healthcare industry, the burnout is real. Uh, being overworked, uh, being overstressed, having high caseloads, a, a very high productivity requirement, and the demands to consistently meet those um, requirements on a daily, monthly, annual basis. For me, uh, when I got licensed, initially I thought like, oh, now that I'm licensed, I'm going to you know, continue to impact lives and mm -hmm. continue to show up for my clients and, and serve them at the highest level of excellence. And I'm going to increase my income because I'm licensed now. So yeah. I get all these, all these dream jobs. And, but I don't want to just have the impact and have the license. I want the work-life balance. Or as you would probably say, I want to be more in harmony with yeah. like my belief system. Like I'm a family guy. I'm, I'm a husband of nine years. We have a eight-year-old daughter who's going to be turning nine soon. And nice. um, so when I got licensed, it was like a big deal in terms mm -hmm. of not just the income and the impact, but the harmonious and being congruent in who I was as a person and a professional. Mm -hmm. And in 2019, I was working uh, at my downtown county jail. And that environment is a very difficult environment. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, I was working in a hospital setting and um, I was let go. Mm. Uh, at the time, I was 38 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife uh, was at home with our three-year-old daughter, and she just wasn't ready to return back to work yet. Yeah. But here I was, a 38-year-old, licensed marriage and family therapist, unemployed. Mm. And all I could do is, what in the world, what in the world am I going to do now? Yeah. Um, but that's when I decided to bet on myself. Yes, come on now. And finally, it was like, okay, it, it is time to start my own business. Yes. And so I started my company, and the doors were open to my online practice. Yeah. And guess what happened, Alante? I fell into the same trap mm. I was in previously, except this time I was in private practice. And what I mean by trap, I got on that same burnout treadmill. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning that the first decision or one of the first decisions I made 
was to partner with a tech company. Okay. And initially it was great because they do all the marketing, the advertising, the billing, mm-hmm. um, and they match you with clients. So I built my caseload fast. Yeah. But the problem was if, and this is if, Alante, if mm-hmm. I saw a client or a couple for a full 50 minutes, mm-hmm. guess how much I got paid? You don't have to guess. I'm going to tell you, girl. <laughs> $25. Can oh. you imagine being an entrepreneur, a small business owner, a professional service provider, mm-hmm. and getting paid $25 for the service you provide to help that person heal and to impact that life? But that's mm-hmm. what I chose for myself because... It was better than being a W-2, so I thought. Mm. But frankly, you can't sustain that, right? So um, I eventually left that tech company. And I have a story to tell you. When I left that tech company, um, I successfully converted some clients to private pay. uh, Because, you know, relationships are so important. And it's hard to find a therapist that you know I can trust. That's the Mm. best fit. So... Uh, For all of us in small business, when we find our dream clients or they find us, you want to cultivate that relationship and keep it. So I brought some of those clients with me to private pay. And one particular client that came with me, uh, he began investing $75 uh, Mm -hmm. for his therapy sessions. A little 3X, okay. Uh, 3X, (laughs) but obviously, Alante, I still had some issues around money Mm -hmm. and like, as human beings, we all have inherent worth, right? Like we all have intricate worth as human beings, but as professional service providers, we got to tie some kind of monetary value to like what we're offering people. Absolutely. So I still have work to do. So I did some work. I hired a coach, got in the program and I began all of a sudden I learned about this thing called money mindset. Mm. (laughs) No, (laughs) I had never heard about money mindset before. Mm. (laughs) I really didn't. Growing up in elementary, high school, you know, college, post college, this money mindset thing did not come up in my life until I became an entrepreneur, a small business owner in private practice. Yes. Yeah. And what I realized is that I had a money story, a narrative around money, where be, with, with me being a man of faith, I didn't want to like be a person of faith and have this belief system of, oh, because I'm a man of faith, you know. I'm, I'm always going to be healthy and wealthy and prosperous and because there's some extremes to that ideology. Absolutely. But what I had chosen for myself was not the what they would call the prosperity gospel per se, but a poverty gospel where, mm. where because uh, as people of faith, sometimes we associate being like a good person or being uh, righteous or, or being in alignment with what God wants you to be with, with like being poor and impoverished. Mm. Awesome. And so I had to learn that there's a middle ground mm-hmm. um, called stewardship. And in small business, it's different mindset. In small business, we are responsible for determining our income, our sales, our profits. Mm-hmm. And if we don't take ownership of that part as a CEO of our company, yes. now we're screwing ourselves. Mm-hmm. as opposed to being a W-2 employee and putting in that work, earning that promotion and Come interviewing on. and not getting selected. Mm-hmm. Like a small business, we select ourselves as a CEO and it's yeah. up to us to determine our income and so forth. Yeah. So this is kind of some background into even before I met you, Alante, but it's so important for people to know this um, because it's going to make sense of how you came into my life. Mm-hmm. Okay. So after I did this coaching program, and now I had a healthier relationship with money, and I learned to operate from a place of faith, uh, belief, trust, and abundance. Come on. Uh, and, and, and stewardship. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we learned is, is who we associate with. Mm-hmm. Um, because if we're in small business, and we're trying to grow a six, seven, eight-figure business, but, but we're surrounded by a bunch of four and, and you know, Someone, yeah. Four figure, five figure. Mm-hmm. That's where we're going to remain. And so I joined a mastermind in January of last year. It's a 12 month commitment. Uh, one of the biggest investments I've made uh, in my life. 
uh, basically a mortgage. Yep. Um, and with these kind of investments, it's it's still the responsibility on me to figure out how to bring things to, into fruition and to manifest things into my life and my business. Absolutely. And so that's kind of where I was at in March of last year, 2023. I was in this mastermind. Um, and I know that I want to build a um, eight figure business or businesses because I have two companies. Yes, yes, um, yes. But I can't do it by myself. And so in March of last year, I'm trying to figure out how do I grow my therapy practice where I specialize helping individuals and couples? Mm -hmm. uh, but I also want to get into the coaching space because I see there's a need to help other therapists in private practice be time rich CEOs. Come on. And all right, now here comes the Alante piece, um, <laughs> the game changer, another game changing moment. Let's get into that because going back and walking back through where we where you were before we started working together march of 2023 what were some of the challenges you were experiencing as a solopreneur who's branching into his ceo role a big part of it is administrative mm -hmm. um i love people um, i love to work with people when it comes to emails and follow-up emails yes. and administration and tracking all the nuances of managing things to like be highly organized and detail conscious and precise. Yes. I, I value those. I mean, I love to be around people who are organized. My wife is highly organized. That's one of the things that attracts me to her. So I, I love to be around organization. Yeah. I love structure. But if you ask me to create it on my own. Mm, it's a different story. And so I was running my therapy practice in March. I was starting a new company in March. Mm -hmm. I had my caseload I was managing on my therapy practice. So much and like, you might say, why would you even do that, Jamal? Why, why would you, if you're one person, why would you even start a second business because of the admin piece? And, but I knew it needed to, I knew it needed to be, uh, happen. Yeah. But I also discovered there's resources out there, people out there. And so yeah. I learned about you and yeah. your, your streamlining and scale. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I need to find somebody and work with Alante to help me streamline these processes and systems yes. so that I can optimize whatever I'm meant to have in terms of serving my clients well and, and maximize my income. Yes. And as a man today who's running two businesses, you are doing an amazing job. And going back through that time, I want to pause here and really emphasize that there's a difference between mastering your craft and being a business owner. A lot of us, we know what our genius zone is. We know what our strengths, our talents, what we're blessed with naturally. And we do that phenomenally. But learning how to run a business, learning how to mm -hmm. streamline operations, that's a different story that we're not necessarily taught as entrepreneurs, as business owners, that we just more so learn along the journey. And we pick up these tools and put them in our toolkit. And we just continue evolving. So what wins over this past year? It's been almost a year since we first started partnering together. What has been some of the wins and transformations, Jamal, that you have experienced from where you were last year to where you are today? Last year, I was, um, my therapy clients were investing for a one-off session, a traditional one-to-one -one fee for service. They would come see me and invest $250. Mm -hmm. for an individual therapy session. For a couple session, they would invest $300. Okay. That's the traditional model um, mm -hmm. for therapy. Uh, my practice is primarily, primarily power of pay. So we'll note that. And $250, um, that's great. That was a huge jump. Mm -hmm. But here's where the transformation happened. Um, as I got a health relationship with money and began to make informed decisions about my business as a CEO, yeah, I knew there was more out there. Oh, and yeah. I learned about um, pricing my services based upon the value that's offered to my clients. Yes. As opposed to trading dollars for hours. Mm -hmm. And in this mastermind, I was processing, okay, well, 
when I think about the value of this person being suicidal, yeah, the value of doing a homicide assessment, a CPS risk assessment, and helping people overcome um, trauma and grief and loss and helping them increase their income and get promotions. Yeah. The, the value of what we do as mental health care providers is priceless. It is. Uh, it is. You can't put a price tag on a person choosing to live when we're thinking about dying and now having newfound purpose beyond their suffering. Nice. Um, so I began thinking about offering therapy packages, mm -hmm. um, premium therapy packages, which is a totally different mindset. Uh, it's not the norm in my industry. Yeah. But even though I was thinking about it and I believed in it, mm -hmm. like, how do I get there? Yes. And, and I remember meeting with you, Alante. Yeah. We were having, maybe it was a discovery call or maybe our first CEO intensive. I, I'm not mm -hmm. sure, sure which one. The CEO right. intensive? Oh, yeah. And you began to implement it for me. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Alante just reached down into my heart and soul and she sees something that, that I also see or I didn't ask you to do that. Mm -hmm. You actually asked a question. You said, Jamal, why don't you just offer, why don't you offer packages? Yeah. And then you began to help me figure out the price points and everything. Mm -hmm. I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> this is the best, Alante is the best coach ever. <laughs> And I remember that very first call because you originally came to us for just the Dipsado build out. Mm -hmm. But one thing that we do differently is it's a hybrid program. So as you're getting the done for you portion out, me and you are also meeting, having our own strategy sessions and consulting on you being a timer CEO. So going back through that CEO intensive, I remember mapping out your offer suite. I remember mapping out your workflows. And I remember that whole transformation, that initial transformation of how we literally 10X your rates. He's talking about how initially you went from $25 to $75. And then you went from $250 to $350, depending on if it's individuals and marriages. And then we raise that even more because you understood the transformation that you provide and also the value that you give into the marketplace in your industry. Like you said, it is absolutely priceless. So what was that transformation like just looking at your offer suite before anything was built out? I can, I can do this. Mm. Like I can have a career, a long, healthy career as a licensed therapist. Um, yes. I don't have to be burned out. Yeah. Um, I can have time freedom. I can be rich in my energy. Come on. Um, I can have financial abundance. I mean, even right now talking about it, I'm getting emotional. If I cry, I, I start crying. It is what it is. Yeah. But exactly. to come to that belief of the, in the reality that, yes, it is still so much hope in me, Alante, that I can make it. Yeah, and you are making it, Jamal. Yeah, um, that, wow. Um, because I'm 42 years old mm -hmm. and I love to serve people. I love being in this industry, yeah. but I just cannot operate the way we are conditioned, yes. trained to Probably. operate. Mm -hmm. I love and that. so working with you and others has opened up a whole new world of possibilities. That's been really energizing. Yes, yes, yes. And shout out to God for that, that divine connection, because it has been such a beautiful journey since then. So question for you, Jamal, is why did you decide to go with a uh, streamline and scale versus all the other operations experts out there? I was actually looking for someone else. Um, I I invested in Dubsado mm -hmm. and I saw someone do a wonderful presentation and I was looking for her, couldn't find her. And mm -hmm. I kept coming across your name, Alante. Mm. I said, let me, let me click Alante. And I read your background of how successful you've been. And I went to your website and all your testimonials. Mm -hmm. I joined your timer to your Facebook community. Yes. And immediately when I joined, you, you reached out to me. And I just knew that 
and your core values, one of them being divine alignment. Oh, yes. Um, and the way you treat people and you being a, a successful woman of color in small business. And I saw part of your story of how you you launched your business and you had some challenges during COVID and you overcame those. And yeah. I was like, this is a winner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know her, but she's a winner. <laughs> and uh, I remember I was so ready to invest. <laughs> like by the time I was talking to you, I was like, when is she going to schedule me? And like, just tell me, just tell me the investment. <laughs> I'm, re I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I, 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 I came to you hot, Alante. I mean, by the time by the time I did my research on you, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw who you had worked with and your mm -hmm. mindset around money, um, and how organized you are, and just the quality of your work, I could probably go on. But thank you. It was a done deal. Yeah. It was just I all about connecting and figuring out next steps. Thank you for that. And to put perspective around the work that we did with Jamal, y'all, we not only completely automated his onboarding and offboarding process for his private practice, allowed him to have some mental space to free his mind from all of those mind-numbing and repetitive admin tasks that we don't need to be doing as CEOs. Not only did we help you 10x your rates and create the infrastructure of your seven, soon to be eight-figure business, you also launched a whole new other company, The Purpose Driven Therapist. We were able to help you streamline and create, you know, a landing page and get some operations done for that. And um, the just seeing your journey, Jamal, as a CEO, and now you have a team, you're growing your team, you have your phenomenal assistant. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite parts of the journey. The work we do, yes, that's amazing, but it's the transformation as a CEO, as a leader, mm -hmm that creates ripple effects that generations to come will be able to, oh my God, I'll be chills right now, but they will be able to benefit and learn from. And it's just more about leaving this world in a better place than how we found it. And I'm so grateful for our connection. I'm so grateful for Dubsado. I'm so grateful for even Sharice, our mutual friends, Dean, mm -hmm. all the amazing people mm -hmm. that we're in, you know, community with. Really quickly, let's get into that as well, because the work didn't just stop here with us. You also connected with some other members in the community as well to help prosper throughout your CEO journey. What was that like in meeting these professionals and you know continuing on your journey? What was that like for you? So one of our uh, beloved colleagues, uh, Sharice, she was one person that also referred you or recommended you to me. Her and I were in the same mastermind together. Um, it's important to note um, I told the, uh, the audience about the client that began investing $75 per session. Mm -hmm. Prior to meeting you and getting involved, I did level him up to $175 per session. Mm -hmm. But by the time you and I were done with our work, or at least continuing our work, that same client had now put down a $4,000 investment mm. toward an $8,000 therapy package. Let's... We got to take a moment because that is a quantum leap. That is a huge jump. And that is something, if you're new to money mindset, that kind of transformation is like, you can feel it. It's so spiritual. It is so spiritual because it's, it's kind of like that confirmation and validation that, wow, there's people who honestly understand and see the value that I bring to the marketplace. And they're willing to invest at that level because they trust the kind of transformation that you put out. And that says a lot about the work that you do, your clients, your reputation, and also the network that you've built over the last almost, what, five, six, seven years, Jamal. And this is a client who we, as you indicated, we had that know, like, and trust factor. Mm -hmm. um, and so what happened was I saw some success, but I, I had the belief in these packages that we had created. Mm -hmm. And I had a caseload um, and I had some inquiries into my therapy practice, like new uh, leads, but I was still struggling with like, how do I have these conversations? How mm -hmm. do I level clients up? How do I onboard new clients at higher levels? Mm -hmm. And you saw that and you recommended that I watch a video 
by a beloved colleague of ours that I met through you, Dean Forbes. Hey, Dean. Yes. Hey, Dean, if you're out there, good to see you, my man. <laughs> I don't see you, but I love you. Um, yeah. So I watched the video, the, the presentation that Dean did in collaboration with you, which again, the collaboration is, is powerful because once I met you and you um, co collaborated with Dean, mm -hmm. I then saw his work as a ethical, highly successful sales professional. Mm -hmm. And smart. we can talk more about that in a moment, just this the stigma that's tied to being a sales professional and yeah. the work that comes along with that piece. Um, mm -hmm. But I also got associated with uh, Liku Amadi. Yes. Um, who helped me, who helped me, she's a, she's a lawyer mm -hmm. who helped me establish the purpose of therapist. Mm. Um, she's based out of California, like I am. And again, she operates with that same type of growth and abundance mindset. So mm -hmm. in meeting you, it was also a gateway to all these other relationships and business opportunities that I would need, that, that I would genuinely need as a CEO of my company. Yeah. Um, so here's my point I want to get to is I was struggling still, mm -hmm. even though I had you in my corner and I was exposed to these new relationships, it was still a struggle. Like, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, and then I started reading some books um, and I noticed that sales professionals, at least the highly successful ones, the most successful ones, Mm -hmm. They really value personal development. Absolutely. And they value mental health. And to be a sales professional, you really got to show up a certain way. You got to overcome rejection. Mm -hmm. You got to overcome fear. You got to overcome scarcity if you want to be the best. And that's what I saw in Dean. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm going to reach out to Dean. And fortunately, it worked out. He took me on as a personal client. I want, so I want to highlight here, I was in the mastermind and I'm getting all this training in the mastermind. Mm -hmm. It's high level training and sales as well in the mastermind. Mm -hmm. um, but at this point, I did need some one-on-one -on -one coaching, some one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Um, and that's where Dean came in. And that's when more results came. Yeah. Um, and working with Dean during that time, there were several clients that came into my practice and we generated by just by deposits, um, mm -hmm. nearly $25,000. Wow. And wow. In about eight weeks, eight to 10 weeks. Was that record breaking for you? Has that ever happened in your career, Jamal? It's not common in my industry. That's that's what we need to highlight is in yeah. our industry, we're trained to go one to one fee for service. Hey, mm -hmm. come talk to me for 125. Yeah. Talk to me for 150. Or for those who have higher rates, you know, come talk to me for 350. Mm -hmm. But this package model is non-traditional in therapy. And I went from 25 to 250 to securing deposits of $3,500 mm. to one client um, after our discovery call, our consultation, you know, he spoke to his wife that night mm -hmm. and he had her support. And the next morning uh, he paid upfront $6,000. Wow. Um, because he wants the transformation. He wants the, the change and he was motivated. Nice. And so what I discovered is as we grow as professionals, Come on. Oftentimes our clients grow with us. Yes, they do. Yes. But if we, but, but if, if we aren't committed to our personal growth and our development, if we aren't being a higher version of ourselves, mm -hmm. then our, our clients will stay just right there below us. Right. Exactly. And so it's been wonderful to see that there, there are people out there in every part of the country who need mental health services. Um, yes. and it's up to us as providers in the industry to raise the bar of excellence mm. because there is a direct connection between the outcomes in therapy, mm -hmm. uh, the outcomes in marriage counseling, the outcomes in our group work that we do, because everybody wants their life to be changed. Yeah. 
everybody's in pain and some kind of suffering and wants to feel better and to heal. And mm -hmm. when people invest at a higher level, they show up different. They do. Oh, yes. Different energy is completely different ballgame. Completely different. So, Jamal, I have just two questions left, and then we can get ready to conclude. My second to last question is, what would you say to anyone who is considering working with Streamline and Scale? If you are considering working with Streamline and Scale, look no further. <laughs> um, Alante is congruent. Right? You know, when you're looking for who you work with and you, you know, everybody has a website or a landing page and a biography and, you know, people want to attract you to their business so that they can do, you know, hopefully acquire your business. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that whatever you read about Alante that she puts out herself or her team puts out, it's in alignment, uh, it's congruent, it's authentic. And she, she has exceeded my expectations by far. And that's one of the best phones in the world to make an investment in something. And when you when you invest, you want to see not only a monetary return on investment, um, mm -hmm. but even the fact that we're still here today collaborating. Um, Alante yeah. is incredible to work with. Just check your budget, do your numbers, figure out how you got to move money around, make the investment. And you won't regret it. Thank you. Thank you for those words, Jamal. All right, so my last question is, I know that you and Ms. Tammy have been up to some exciting things and who knows what you guys have in store for 2024. So please do let everyone know what, if you have any current offers, any specials, any um, events happening, fill us in what's happening in January. We year. are in a critical time in history uh, when it comes to mental health and the direction of our industry and the rise of the coaching industry. As a matter of fact, we have so many qualified, trained mental health providers who are leaving mental health because they're burnt out. Yeah. And so if you are a mental health professional, a therapist in private practice, struggling with burnout, and you know you are undercharging for your services, and maybe you're considering leaving the industry because you just can't do it anymore, or maybe you're considering uh, transitioning into becoming a, a coach because you've lost confidence in your ability to operate within the parameters of the mental health industry. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that you can remain in the mental health industry. Yes. If you're at LCSW, LMFT, LPCC, you are trained, you are qualified, yes. but the way you may have been conditioned to think and to operate is not in your best favor as a practice owner as a CEO. So if you need someone to help you grow your mindset and help you grow in your marketing and help you improve in your sales um, mm -hmm. so that you can build a business uh, to your liking, where you can have a smaller caseload so that you have the time freedom to invest in other parts of your self-care and your life. Um, I am taking on individual clients right now. You can go to the, the, purpose driven therapist forward slash home mm -hmm. and you can read about me and my background and in 2024 um, i want to work with 12 therapists in proper practice and help those 12 individuals yes. grow their mindset uh, grow the, improve their marketing and sales and basically adopt this package model because if you're in small business as a therapist this package model is a game changer not only for you, but it really is in the best interest of the clients you serve. Absolutely. Absolutely, y'all. And I let me go ahead and follow this up because y'all partnering with Jamal, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And Jamal is such an asset to having your network, whether you have a need that he can fulfill or you know someone that has a need that he can fulfill. Right. I know a lot of us out there. One, these are some challenging times. And it has been challenging since, honestly, the pandemic. We don't know what is getting ready to unfold in 2024. But the one thing that you can be sure of is that you're equipped to handle whatever comes your way. And Jamal and his team is the team for you, okay? So if you have any questions at all, if you're ready to connect with Jamal, definitely go to his website. He is also inside of the Facebook group. Feel free to connect with him on Facebook. 
that website right there, book your call, and I'm sure Jamal will be happy to have a conversation and see what fruits can come from you guys partnering together. Thank yeah. you so much, Elate, and I look forward to working with those whom I'm called to serve. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I thank y'all for tuning on in, whether you tuned in live or caught this on the replay. Stay tuned for next Tuesday. We have another uh, special guest coming on up. And outside of that, Jamal, do you have any last words for everyone tuning on in today? Just thank you all for listening. Uh, wishing you all the very best, uh, personally and professionally. And thank you, Elante, for creating this community for us to be a part of. Anytime. No problem at all. Well, until next time, y'all, take care. Bye, everyone.